Hi, and welcome to Best in Tesla. BYD and Tesla continues to cross it, but Tesla has taken the crown back from BYD. But together, they are simply just slaughtering the legacy automakers in China. And the legacy automakers are making huge job cuts in China as well because of weak demand. But EVs are up 38% in China. So the lie being spread about EVs slowdown is not true. It's just the legacy automakers being killed. So let's check it all out and let's dive right in. So BYD has come out with their quarterly numbers and they are still doing pretty well. But Tesla has taken the crown back as the biggest BEV maker on the planet. BYD sold 139,902 passenger BEVs in March. So that was a nice big number. For Q1 2024, BYD delivered 300,114 all-electric vehicles. Of course, more with plug-in hybrids, but to be able to compare them to Tesla that only has BEVs, BYD sold about 300,000 BEVs. And Tesla just delivered their production and delivery numbers, and Tesla produced 433,371 units and delivered 386,810 units. So they are about 30% in front of BYD in Q1. So BYD is about 86,000 units behind Tesla. So let's see if they can catch up during the year. So Tesla did deliver about 30% more BEVs than BYD in Q1 of 2024. So just as I said, after every mainstream media was quick to write that BYD was now bigger than Tesla in BEVs. And not to mention it was only one quarter and Tesla still won the year of 2023. And as I said, Tesla would probably win Q1 of 2024 as well because 95% of all BYD's sales are in China and their sales usually drop off a cliff in January and February. But Tesla is a much bigger player globally and therefore not as affected by the Chinese sales as BYD is. And that is exactly what we see playing out right now. Tesla took back the crown in Q1 of 2024, but I do expect BYD to come back strong as they also expect to grow their overseas sales quite significantly here in 2024. In March, BYD sold a record 38,434 vehicles in overseas markets. That is up 189% year over year. So that is good to see but also a very small number for sales outside China compared to what Tesla is doing. But we do also see that BYD is only up 13.4% year over year in Q1, so not the crazy growth rate we are used to see for the last couple of years. And if we take a look quarterly trailing 12 month, BYD is at the lowest growth we have seen so far. But Q1 is usually a slow quarter, so we should see BYD start growing faster again, as especially as they start real production from their new factory in Thailand, probably doing this quarter. As I don't know if BYD has more ramping up to do in their already existing factories or if they got more factories coming online and where they are at with that. I only know about their Thailand factory for now that should come online very soon. But BYD does expect to grow at least 20% in 2024. As they said, they would deliver about 4 million in totals, including the hybrids. And as about half is BEVs, they should make something like 2 million BEVs in 2024. So I expect a very close race between Tesla and BYD here in 2024. And before everyone starts screaming about what the bad quarter for Tesla, we have to remember the many headwinds they faced in Q1 as they also explained in their press release. Decline in volumes was particularly due to the early phase of the production ramp of the updated Model 3, as we talked about before, at their Fremont factory and probably also at the China factory. And factory shutdown resulting from shipping diversion caused by 
the Red Sea conflict and the arson attack on the Gigafactory in Berlin. So with all of these headwinds and making deliveries very difficult for Tesla, I still think they did pretty well. We have to remember, no one else did better than what Tesla did in Q1 with sales of BEVs, not even BYD. So people quickly forget the bigger picture when Tesla comes in under expectations. Oh, what a bad quarter. They are only number one in the world. <laughs> but we know Tesla is running their factory in China, basically at full capacity or very close to full capacity anyway. They have slowed down a bit by only having people work their normal normal five days a week instead of the 6.5 days a week they have done before. But I think that might also be because they have become more efficient at the factory as we see their March numbers are basically in line with the other high months. So it seems like they are able to do the same with less. So that should help them with the cost of goods sold going forward for sure. But we can see that Tesla continues to deliver close to the 90,000 units a month in China. So we should not really expect any more huge growth coming out of the Tesla China factory at the moment as that factory is running at about 950,000 units a year. The biggest single car factory in the world. But that should be the max capacity for now before the planned expansion. So don't expect any huge growth in China deliveries as we have reached the peak of that factory. And Tesla is opening up new markets as well. As we just saw, they started deliveries of the Model Y in Malaysia for the first time this year. And those vehicles will also come from Tesla's China factory as well. So Tesla has to balance the demand in China and the other places they are opening in Asia and the Pacific and so on. And we did see Tesla raise the prices of all Model Y models in China with about 5,000 RMBs or $690. So it seems like the demand and supply in China is nicely in balance and Tesla was pretty much flat in China sales including export in March year over year only up 0.2% but compared to last month they were up about 47% and the 89,000 units if you hear some analysts talk about this being a bad quarter just remember someone like Neo and Xping sold about 11,000 and 9,000 respectively in March. So no Tesla is doing great in China and is at their max capacity in the country so we should not expect a lot of growth from that factory this year. The growth should come from Texas and Berlin. So the race is still on between the two electric vehicle giants BYD and Tesla. But the same cannot be said about the legacy automakers a joint venture in China. Chinese largest car automaker SAIC is to cut thousands of jobs at its joint venture with GM and Volkswagen because of weak demand. The total numbers account for 30% of employees as SAIC GM and 10% of SAIC Volkswagen. 30% for GM's joint venture is a huge cut and it will probably not be long before GM is a North American car company only as they are getting slaughtered in China. And I don't think GM has any electric vehicles in their portfolio that would do great in China other than the little shoebox of a car, the Wuling Mini EV, but that is not really GM producing that one. And they are only one out of three partners. So they are not making any money on that joint venture at all. But we see the same with Toyota. We don't have all the numbers yet, but in February, we did see Toyota sales in China drop by 36%. But once again, remember the Chinese New Year in February, so it was expected to go down, but that was quite a lot. So let's see if the same will happen again in March, because this, of course, comes as no surprise, as we have talked about for quite some time now, that the legacy automakers will eventually fall off a cliff in China as the EV sales growth very rapidly, and the legacy automakers has nowhere near the same amount of EV production as the EV market share in China. And I personally think the only reason Toyota was actually up in Europe was because of plug-in hybrids that are still doing pretty well here. But I think that is a short-term thing. As we can see here in Scandinavia, BEVs are simply just taking over. And in China, the biggest car market in the world, they just hit 48% of new energy vehicle market share in March. We don't have all the numbers yet, but from the 1st to the 24th of March, China new energy vehicle sales stood for 
48% of the market. So almost 50% in China is now plugged in. Not a number any of the legacy automakers can keep up with. Only BYD that is 100% plug-in and 50% BEVs, and of course Tesla that are 100% BEVs. Chinese new energy vehicle sales was 490,000 units in March from the 1st to the 24th, and that was up 84% from the same period last month. But February being extremely low this year due to the Chinese New Year, it's more fair to look at the year over year, and here we are talking about 39% growth. So if you hear that EVs are dead and the growth story is over, you know you're talking to someone that have not really been looking at the numbers, but just listen to what the legacy automakers are saying, as some of them are really struggling, as we just heard with GM, Volkswagen and Toyota in China. But that is only because they are losing in China. Tesla is still looking strong with the same sales numbers as last year with their max capacity and BYD is still looking great, and the new energy vehicles in total are up year to date about 38 percent so there is really not any slowdown to be found here in china we are only witnessing legacy automakers being slaughtered in the most important car market for most of them especially the europeans but tesla is still doing great in china and leading the way in europe with close to 20 percent bev market share so far with the number that has come in and in the us well we have heard about competition for a long time but to be real there is still no competition in the US for Tesla whatsoever. So a difficult start to the year for most automakers, but BYD and Tesla are looking to come out of this turbulent quarter the strongest while we are waiting to hear how Volkswagen and GM did in Q1 with their EVs. As Mary said, this is the year of execution. So can't wait to see the execution numbers from GM in Q1 and see when GM will be able to deliver as many BEVs in a full year as Tesla does in a quarter even a weak quarter like Q1. It will probably take a few years. And thank you for watching. And until next time, take care out there and be nice. <laughs>